Okay, I am going to show you how to make a pheasant. And this one's given me some challenges because there's a lot of color variations and it's hard to really block out how those color variations work. So, um, looking at what I got, my color variation is basically it's an orange color on the tail with striping and then it's an orange back, red front, white stripe, and blue head with red around it. That's the basics of what I got. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of texturing in here and I have to decide if I just want to knit it or try to knit in the texturing. Um, what I have decided to do is I'm going to knit it and I'm going to try to put in the texturing with paint. Okay. So trying to simplify a pheasant is, uh, it's going to be fun, but it's also their body and how their head is, it's going to be a lot like a rooster. So you can get an idea of if you make this, you do the tail a little differently and you can have a rooster. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. So what we're going to do is on some areas, it would be perfectly easy to do um some color change so it's mostly striping on that tail so we're going to do some striping on the tail <clears throat> so i have several colors i'm working with i have orange and i have brown um and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stripe in orange and brown and here's the other thing that um that tail is pretty stiff so I may be making, trying to make uh, two tails or um, trying to sew something underneath. And if that's the case, then you do another tail and you sew black underneath. But I'm going to try and just um, knit a tail. And my focus is going to be where I use the... Um, macaw but i'm not going to do anything special i'm just going to knit it and what i may do is sew the sides together because that tail is really thin and narrow and then i can stick a piece of wire up in there okay so kind of showing you my process like i did the flamingo <laughs> all righty so here we go let's get started in this craziness we want to start with orange and then we want to move over to brown. All right. So here's what we want to do. I want to move back this way, so I'll move the camera back as far as I can. There we go. Now, okay. So it starts with a point and works its way out. And because what I'm probably going to end up doing is sewing it around, um, we'll make it a little wider. That makes it easier. Okay, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And 2, 3, 4. Yeah. All right. So skip 4. Make a note. Skip four and cast on four and orange. Gonna make a net. All right. So one, two, three, four. Then you're gonna chain cast on four. One, two. Three and I always put the loop on four. Okay. Now we got that set up and prepped. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Okay, so starting out on the tail, it pretty much starts about immediately. I'd say we're gonna do um five rows. Straight up knit. So 
here we go, here we go. And, and you want to slip the end stitches and here's the reason being it'll make it easier when you sew up the sides to make it stiff to stick the wire through so you're going to go slip one knit three for five rows slip one knit three for five rows so this is row two and then this is row three and then this is row four And then this is row five. Now, if you're wanting to create a rooster, I'm sure you can go in and do like a whole bunch of little ones of these things. Um, and you like get what you're after. Okay. So we're going to do um, slip one, knit three, one through five. All right. All right. We're going to change. To our brown, and we're not changing the color, we're simply adding it because we're going back and forth with it. So it's like, okay, so you're gonna slip one. I'm gonna try to knit in that tail so it's more hidden. Knit three. You snip the edge off a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. There. Okay, so you slip one, knit three. Then you go over here and you slip one, knit three. Pick up, slip one, knit three, pick up, slip one, knit three. All right. Then you go back and forth. Okay. So you're going to do that for I'd say 10 rows. You can move that tail as long and thin. So like half of it is that. So I'm gonna say for 10 rows you're going to slip one minute three and then and brown and then if orange you're gonna slip one knit three for like ten rows okay and it looks like we did four so pause the video and complete ten rows okay at this point we need to do an increase so this is where I say increase, well, no, let's do slip one, knit three, increase. This is where it could be a challenge, okay. All right, and then you're going to Pick up now. The other way of increasing, if you'd find that that's like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to increase? You can move that over. There's a couple of ways to increase. Move that over and then move up that leg or bridge between the stitches. And there you have an increase. Then you're going to pick up the orange, slip one, knit four. Okay. All right, then you pick up your brown slip one, knit four. Again, if you want to increase, you can move over that stitch and pull up 
leg. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble finding a the leg there. Come on, leg. There. Pull it. There we go. Okay. So you say slip one, knit three, increase, knit two. There, say, and then you pick up slip one, knit. Uh, slip one, knit five. Okay. All right, there. That's your biggest thing. So then you go back to doing what we were doing. Slip one, knit five. Slip one, knit five on your orange and brown back and forth. And you're going to do that for ten rows. So um, you're going to basically just do what we were doing for you. You know, slip one, knit five. And you're going to do this for ten rows. So I'll show you that real quick. And slip one. Knit five. Okay. So the increase, you have two options for an increase. I think that's going to be the better option with what we're doing right now. Okay. So. And then that's going to fold in half. See. Okay. So pause the video, complete 10 rows, and then we'll go from there. All right. So. Now we're going to increase again and then we're going to do 10 more rows. So you see what you got going on there. That you'll sew up. You need to take a wire in there when you sew it up. Okay, so we're going to go slip one, knit four. That's where you can increase. Now the other thing you can do if you don't want to increase that method is um, go ahead and knit that and then um, you can true knit this increase and you can instead of taking that off move it around to the back. Say. That's another option. Okay. Increase how you feel comfortable. So then we're going to um, knit over, slip one, knit one, two, three, four, five, five, six, and then you can switch over. And slip one and knit one, two, three, four, five. And then this is where you have a choice of you can move that over if you think that's too much trouble. Knit it, then wrap it around the back, okay, and true knit. Don't take off the stitch like you normally would. Move the working yarn around the back of the peg and send that loop to the back. Okay, that's your second option of an increase. You may find that one's easier. However, you want to do it. A lot of times, I'll usually just add a stitch at the end. Um, but with us changing colors, it's not easy to do that. So you slip one and knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right. And again, we're going to be doing this for another 10 rows. And you can see that nice striping there. Okay. So then you go in and you. Slip one, knit seven, for ten rows, okay, and then slip one, 
knit seven. What a tail, right? And you're going to do this for 10 rows. I mean, I think that puts us about done. Then I think we can start working on the body. Okay. But you can end up sewing that together and you see how that's going to look. Okay. So go ahead and complete your 10 rows. Pause the video and get that much done. Okay. Look at this tail. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you want to do a golden pheasant, I think this will work for the golden pheasant. The only thing is you'll have to do that cap that's on the back. And um, that's something you do on a different thing. So, um, all right. Now, we want to finish our tail off. So, I'm going to cut the brown. I'm going to tie it off. Okay. And I'm going to cut the orange, too. Okay, and this is stuff you're just going to feed into the stuffed animal. Okay. All right, so there's your tail. That's looking good. I like the look of it. All right, what we got next? So we are to, I think, an orange back with a red front. Yeah. Technically, it's a reddish orange, which I don't think I've got that color. I might actually make think. Aha, uh -huh. reddish orange. Okay, which means that's the color we're switching to. Okay. Bright orange, really nice. Let's get a rich orange. All right. Let me write down my colors here. We got brown. We got light orange. We got dark orange. We got red. Okay. Now we have white. Okay, now. So we've cut those off, and I don't know that we rightly need the brown. The next two colors I'm pretty sure we're going to need is the red color. I like the iridescent and the um, darker reddish brown color. Okay. And um, what you need to keep in mind is when you are working it, you got to think what's going to be on the bottom. So technically, you actually need to start with the red because the red is the chest and the bottom. Okay. So we're going to wrap it and we're going to chain and cast on all 24. If you feel comfortable with it and you think that you can do all the stuff you need to do, you can kitchen or cast on. But I tell you right now, that's hard and it may not do you. Now granted, it does keep a nice smoother look to it, but I'm going to chain cast on to try to keep it simple for you guys, okay? Alright, so what you want to do is you want to chain cast on all 24 pegs, okay, and um, that's when you're going to um, be doing like short rowing and stuff. So go ahead and pause the video, chain cast on, and then we'll move to the next section, okay? Okay, so we've chain cast on. And I put my last loop on the first stitch. It kind of closes it in nice. And you're just going to knit it over. You're going to knit your first row. Don't touch those tail stitches. I'm not ready to add them back in yet. I will make a note in the pattern when I'm always ready to add in the tail stitches. Okay. So, we got our tails sitting over here waiting for us. Alrighty. Now... Once we knit our way around, we are going to do our short rows. And the first thing we're going to do is um, do it in red. Then we're going to switch over to the burnt orange, as I'll call it. And we will do our short row section. So where we are in this, so you know, is you're doing this section here. It's not going to go all the way to here. It's just this section here. Okay, 
Um, you do have to incorporate the fact that there's wings in here you're going to add later. So yes, you're still seeing a lot of orange, but that's going to get covered up in a wing. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, whenever you're designing a, uh, a bird, keep in mind you got to see what's up under them wings. Okay, sometimes you got to look up more than one photo. I've had to. All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to knit... 11 wrap and turn, knit 10 wrap and turn, all the way down um, to, I want to say, 4. Yeah, we'll wrap and turn our way down to 4. And then we will add that in. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 wrap and turn. Okay, so wrap and turn, knit 11 wrap and turn. Knit 10, wrap and turn, and you keep going with the wrap and turn until you are down to four single stitches with, I believe it's going to be three wraps and turns on each side, but it's probably going to be a little bit more than that. So, all right, wrap and turn. So pause the video, continue this wrap and turn process until you have four single stitches of between wraps and turns okay and I can show you what that means so that you know what it's supposed to look like um, this is going to be a long video and I just I want it to be easy to understand go wrap and turn so keep going until you're down to four single stitches and I'll show you what that means so pause the video okay what I mean by four single stitches you'll see there's four one two three four and then you'll see there's a wrap and turn here 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 and here there's four there, and then there should be four on the side. One, two, three, four. All right, you see them two stitches. Okay, at this moment, you're going to change your thread. I mean, your thread, your yarn. Um, assisting with sewing projects over here. All right, so you tie it and pull it to the base. Go ahead and cut that. Tie it around, pull it to base, and then you can just pull it until it doesn't move again. Okay, that way you can just cut it close. Okay, this is where I like to go in and loosen up my stitches. So it's right at the base where I want it. Okay, now. What you want to do now is you want to work back that direction, and then it's going to say knit two together four times, start including your tail stitches. So knit two together one, two, three, four, and then knit three together. See, one, two, three. Knit three together. All right. And then you go in and you knit, starting with the peg you finish with, you knit one, two, three, four, five, knit three together. Okay. Then you knit six, knit three together. Okay. Knit three together, and your last one with knit three together is knit seven, knit three together. Knit three together, and then you're knitting two together as you go along. So then you knit eight, knit two together, knit nine, knit two together, knit ten, knit two together, and um, I'll stop you there. Okay, so pause the video and get that much done, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we've knit 10, knit 2 together, and we have another knit 2 together over here. What that means is I'm going to wrap and turn that, and I'm going to knit 11, knit 2 together, 
and then I'm going to add the red okay because it's half and half it's where you get the color chunking in okay so you knit 11 knit two together and you're not going to cut the orange you're just going to attach the red okay and this is where half and half comes in okay this is where you start doing what I call color chunking. I'm sure there's a more technical version of what that's supposed to be called, but that is what I call it. And I go with what I I can come up with. Okay. Now, what you do from there is you pick up and you knit 11, knit 2 together. So you just keep going around, knit 11. Knit two together over here at the end. All right, that completes the section of the um, bird. Now we're going to go to the next section. So we've just completed through here. Now we need to get through here, which is a lot like the heel of a sock. And um, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to be doing half red and half orange. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So at this point, kind of release that. Get out of your way. Okay. At this point, what you want to do is you want to pick up your orange over here and knit 12 to get you back to where you can start color chunking. And we're going to start into our short row pretty immediately so that we can start getting that dramatic V at the bottom of the body. Okay, and that's going to be important with what we're up to. Alright, so then you're just going to knit 12. Alright, now. Um, when you're doing color chunking, remember to keep the same um, color going under and over. Okay, so your orange is going to go under and over. And this is going to be another row. Okay, so that knit 12 is kind of get you where you need to be to start color chunking. At this point, this is a row. It's going to say knit in the dark orange or the burnt orange. For 12, okay, because we're half and half of it, you know. And then it says it'll say change color. Okay, so there's our half. And then it'll say change color to red. And you will knit 11, wrap, and turn. Okay, so you're going to be wrapping and turning this half of the loom, which is the bottom half. And this is what's going to create that L kind of um, thing. And we're going to do it just like a heel. Um, it's going to be kind of important. Okay. So because what you've done is you've created this section here, which is part of it. Now you need to get the whole heel going. Okay, so um, it's going to work pretty much just like a heel um, okay so you wrap and turn all right and then you're going to go over here and you're going to knit 10 wrap and turn and you continue this wrap and turning and it's pretty dramatic so I'm going to say wrap and turn it down to 2 Okay, so I want it dramatic. So you're going to knit over and wrap and turn again. So you're going to keep wrapping and turning just like you did over here, but you're doing it over here. And you're going to get it down to two single stitches between, I believe, what's going to be five wraps and turns. Okay, so pause the video and get your wraps and turns done, and then we'll come back. Okay. Okay, so I've dropped and turned down to two, and then you'll see one, two, three, four, five. On this side, one, two, three, four, 
five. Now, once you do the wrap and turn knit two, then you're going to knit two, which I've already done, and then knit two together. Okay. Then you're going to start with where you left off, and you're going to knit three, knit two together, knit four, knit two together. And you're going to continue this until you get over to here and pause the video. Okay, so um, go ahead and keep adding in, starting with the stitch you finished with, knitting over, and when you get to, I believe it's going to be probably knit nine, knit two together. When you get over to this one and knit two together, uh, come back to the video, okay? So when you get over to this one, come back to the video because we got to do a little wrap with the orange to keep it connected, okay? Okay, so at this point, you want to wrap that orange up under that, and then you're going to knit your way back. This keeps you attached so you don't create a huge hole here that you have to sew up later. If you forget, you're going to be sewing up this bottom area here. It's close enough, you can just swing over there and sew it up. Okay, so then you knit 11, knit two together, and you have now completed. I believe it's what, row five? All right. Now, then you're going to pick up your orange and you're going to knit 12. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see what you got going in on here. There's this big gap here that's going to get sewn in, and what you've just created is a nice L. All right, so once it says stitches relax, you've created an L. All right, so what we need to do now that we've created an L is I believe we're going to need to do or to this area here. And I think five rows, we'll do six rows so that we keep it even. So we'll do six rows of half and half of the, um, so we're up through here. I think we'll do six rows of half and half. So you go over here, now it counts as row one, two, three, four, five, six, and you should finish over here. Okay, so you start doing your half and half, and remember, the same color goes under and over. So you go under and over, and which my orange is the color that does that, and then I knit 12, and then uh, to keep it from tangling, you come back the direction that you just came, okay, So you stop here, and then you come back the direction you came, you pick up the red, and you work your way over. And this will be row one. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video, complete six rows of color chunking, and then we can start doing more of a chest area. But we've got to give more of a backbone of what's going on here. And right now we don't have it, so we need to give more of a back. Alright. And so go ahead and pause the video and complete six rows. And then we will go from there. Okay, so this is what we have. And there's the bottom. We've done our. So we've done this, and we're about here, and we need to do this little chest area. So, um, 
you go up and under. And so you're going to knit 12 in the orange. And then you're going to pick up the red. And that's when you're going to do your short row. Okay. So um, it's pretty shallow. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit 11, wrap and turn, knit 10, wrap and turn, um, knit 9, wrap and turn, knit 8, wrap and turn. And um, that's as far down as you're going to get. You don't have to. more than that. Okay. So we've knit 11 wrap and turn. Knit 10. Wrap and turn. Knit nine, wrap and turn. And then knit eight, wrap and turn. So we knit nine, wrap and turn. And we knit eight. Wrap and turn. And then we need knit eight, knit two together. Okay. So, we wrap and turn. So, you should have two wraps and turns on each side. And so, then you knit eight, knit two together two times. And then you'll do that wrap thing. Okay. That completes a row actually. So knit over two, knit over two. Then under, over, knit twelve in the orange. And then you pick up your red and you knit 10, knit two together two times. And that completes this set. And you're going to do the exact thing we just did again, where you wrap and turn two times on each side. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and complete the exact thing we just did again, and then we'll come back. Okay, so in order to do this, um, you can see that it goes from big to really small pretty instantly. And so I need to get half of my loom on each side down to eight pegs and yes you're going to have to do a little bit of sewing that's nothing it ain't going to hurt anything okay so what you want to do is to keep it easier to sew you're going to decrease over move that outer stitch that's your slip stitch so what it'll be written as is slip decrease knit two together okay then you're going to knit your way over um how many let's see one two three four five six yeah okay so you're going to knit over six then you're going to decrease and I just go ahead and grab that end one 
so that I can just go ahead and pull it out. So I'm going to decrease it and it's wanting to give me trouble. I need to loosen that. Well, I can just decrease it this way. There. Knit the two together. And then move that one over and knit it. Okay. You do the same thing over here. So you come around here and you're going to decrease over, move that over. So you're going to slip one, decrease. And when you have a hole, fill in the hole by moving the outer stitch. Okay. And then you're going to knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, decrease in, okay, knit two together, and then knit one. So you're always trying to fill in that hole, all right? That's what you're trying to do. Okay, so um, you're gonna end up doing the same thing again, and that should get you down to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you need to do one more decrease on each side. Um, so at this point, you decrease over. So slip one, decrease, knit two together. And then you're going to knit what, four, is it one, two, three, four, knit four. Then you're going to decrease. Make sure you move that one over before it work good. Okay, and then you knit two together, knit one. All right, this side is ready to start your head. And we're going to do this again over here. So you're going to decrease. Move that over. So you're going to slip. Knit two together. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to decrease over. Move that stitch over. Okay. And then you're going to knit two together, knit one. All right. Now, at this point, you don't really need either one of these colors. We're switching to white. So I'll give you a little tail to add, and I'm going to move these out of the way. So next, I need white, but I'm going to attach the white on this side. Because what I want to do is I'm going to work the front of the head, like where the beak is. So we're going to work here, and we're going to work our way down to the back of the head. Okay. And then um, we'll be doing a bind off kind of thing. So I'm going to go get my white, and then we'll be ready to start our head. This is what you should have. And I know it seems kind of wonky, but there's your tail. There's your body, and now we're ready to start our head. And you will need a um, blue, an iridescent blue, a white. And with these red patches, I'm thinking it's going to be easier to take a piece of felted fabric and actually um, glue and then sew them on to the bird okay so i might like hot glue them on and then do that eye cinching area and that should give you what you need without having to do it but i don't think i have any red felt so i may have to improvise on um how i want to do that because looking at other things there's a, still a space between those um those red slots, okay, there's a space in between, as you can see there, 
So with that space, it's just going to be easier to like add a little piece of red felt to do kind of like the waddle, I guess, similar thing to a chicken. <laughs> I don't know my bird parts, so you know, you bird lovers out there that know your bird parts, forgive me. So let me write down what I just did and uh, I'll get the white. Okay, now that I got my nose written down. Okay, well, I have a feeling this is a younger male pheasant because when I start looking, the um, the white band can go all the way around. Sorry, this one doesn't. So, but I've seen ones where the white band goes all the way around, and I really would like to keep this, you know, where it's easier. Okay, so like there's one where the white band goes all the way around, and yes, the internet is not working. <laughs> I don't think it likes the cold weather. Okay, so I'm going to try to make it easier and just do the white band all the way around. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three rows of slip one, knit seven in the white. Okay, so slip one, knit seven in white. And every time you slip a stitch, you'll want to put a stitch marker on that stitch. Okay, so a slip you you probably have wanted to do this slip stitching here um but i would start it here and the reason being is we're just going to need to sew that up because it's going to be a weave in bind off and uh i'm just going to sew that up when i do the bind off so you want to um go ahead and start putting a stitch marker on this slip and this slip okay and then this is row two. And then slip in row three. Okay, so three in the white. Okay. And then I think what I want to do is five in the blue. So at this point, I want to change color to blue. And I have this kind of iridescent metallic blue, and it's worked great for these kinds of birds. Um, I'll try to include the link of where I got this stuff. I think it's called Hobie. Uh, I could be spelling, I mean, it's pronouncing that wrong. It's not an American company. It's um, it's a foreign company. So, But they got here. It was great. The product was great. So I have no issues with them. Um, it does take a little bit to get here, but the, the yarn is awesome. I found it very useful for these iridescent birds. Or like the hummingbird and the um, peacock and any other bird that has iridescent feathers. It kind of is helpful. Okay. Now, so I'm going to do a... My stitches. Slip one, knit five. Um, slip one, knit seven for five rows. There we go. Now I'm talking clear, right? Slip one, knit five for seven rows. Okay. And so basically, what we've been doing is you're just doing it in blue. All right. So pause the video and get that much done, and then we'll be back. Okay. Okay, so, um, to this area here, so I'm going to do a short row so that we can kind of start to create a curvature, and I usually will do that in shaping, and then we'll be ready to do a beak, and that's where you're going to need a cream color, which I do have sitting around here. I am not going to knit in that red. Um, if you do, you can kind of follow the technique of the peacock. I just don't want to do that much sewing to fix the head because of the color change. So, as I said, I'm going to do the red felt or find something that's going to, um, work similar to that. Okay. Um, just because I think it's going to be easier. I'm trying to make life easier and trying to explain this, so... Um, we're going to do a short row section in the blue. So we're going to um, slip one, knit over one, two, three, four, five. 
wrap and turn, knit one, two, three, four, wrap and turn, knit three, one, two, three, wrap and turn, knit two, one, two, wrap and turn, knit two, knit two together, two times, and then knit one. And then slip one, knit one, two, three, four, knit two together, two times, and knit one. All right, that should be what it's looking like underneath there. Okay, so I want to go ahead and get my beak color. It's not going to long. Oh, it just kind of long straight. So I'm going to deal with the skein up here. Okay, so we need to do our beak. And I'm not going to cut this color. I'm just going to change it. And tie it off again. Oh, don't think I meant to do that. I wanted it all the way down to the base. All, right. all the way down to the base. There we go. Now, tie the knot again. All right. Now, I didn't cut that because I'm going to go and slip one and um, work it over here. So, let me write down what I just did real quick and I will show you the next section. Okay. So, we're going to slip one. We're going to knit one, two, three, four, five, six, four, two rows. Um, here's row two. So knit six for two rows. Then you're going to knit five. Then you're going to knit four for two rows. So there's one, two. Then you're going to knit three. One, two, three. Then you're going to knit two for three rows. This is the tip of your beak. Then you're going to knit three. One, two, three. Then you're going to knit four for two rows. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And then you're going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. And then knit six for two rows. So one, and two. Okay. This is your beak. And kind of pull it down and save it. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is find my original loops and pull them back up, which is going to be a blue color. Okay, so we're going to look for that blue. All right there. And you can mark them if you want. Um, I know it's going to be blue. And I'm going to tie it off. I'm going to cut me a thing and tie it off. Okay. 
and then I'm going to pick the blue back up and <clears throat> I'm going to knit two together and I'm going to knit four and then I'm going to knit two together and then I'm going to tie off that color okay tie it off and then I'm going to knit one and that concludes the beak okay now and there's your little beak okay okay now um we're past the beak we're moving to the top of the head so what I want to do is slip one knit one two three four five wrap and turn one two three four wrap and turn one two three wrap and turn knit two wrap and turn knit two knit two together two times and this is where you're going to pull your chain up and you'll find the closest one to you you're going to pull it up and then you're going to purl two together now keep in mind you're not going to have very many of these because the head's pretty small so then at this point you're going to slip one knit one two three four knit two together two times move that out of the way then you find the closest chain which is right here you pull it on and pull two together so basically you're starting to attach your head back give it away and you find your closest one to and if you've been marking them you just find the closest stitch marker I've been doing it so long um, <laughs> I just kind of see it and then if you know you're going to be doing another one like that then you just uh, you just pick up the next one just pick up the next chain and put it on there okay and then what you're going to do after this is you're going to do kind of the same thing where you're going to slip one, knit one, two, three, four, five. You're going to wrap and turn and you're going to do one, two, three, four. Wrap and turn, knit one, two, three. Wrap and turn, knit two, one, two. Wrap and turn, knit two. Okay, and then you'll notice there's this little hook on the back. Okay, there's a little hook on the back of their head, and we're gonna we're gonna create that little hook. So what you're gonna do is you're going to knit two, or you can do slip one and knit one over those two pegs one two three four five six and seven okay then what you're going to do is you're going to knit two and then knit two together two times one two and then pull chain and purl two together okay and you saw me do that in advance not always i like to do that in advance so i don't forget okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull a chain over here and the reason why i'm so i think it's so important to remember to pull that chain is so you don't forget Okay, 
So now we're going to slip one, knit one, two, three, four, knit two together two times. You've pulled your chain already and you're going to purl the two together. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause this and write this down real quick, and then we'll be ready to do the other half of the head. Okay, let's finish our head. All right, so we've done that, and what we want to do is we can go ahead and pull the next chain up, and we're going to do the blue of slip one, knit five, pull chain, and purl two together for four rows. So, um, and then we're going to switch up and do white for three rows. Okay. And that should pretty much take that on. Okay. And then we have this one. So there's two. Okay. And purl two together. You can knit the two, but it puts in a ridge, and I don't want a ridge. Okay, and then this is three. And yes, this next one's going to be white. Okay, and then you're going to, this will be four, then you're going to switch back up to white, and you're going to do that for three rows. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to change my color to white. And then I'm going to do the same thing for three rows. And that should about cover me on my head. And that's when we're going to do a weave in, bind off, and then you're to, um, you're going to be to your wings, I think. Because you can't start adding all your colors and stuff pretty much until you have your wings, because you're going to need to do a blend in. There's so much color going on with this bird, so okay, loosen that up so it adds up. Okay, so then you're going to pull a chain over here and then you're going to slip one, knit five, then you've already pulled your chain, so you don't have to, and then you're going to purl two together. Now you should have stitch markers for all this, so you just pull up your next stitch marker. And this is two. Slip one, knit five. And this is row two. And then we'll do row three. And then we'll have a weave in bind off. And yes, remember when you got started, your first slip was actually red. So we're right on the mark. Okay. And you can always blend in with acrylic paint. When it comes to white, I do go to an acrylic paint rather than the paint pen. It's a little softer uh, to do the paint pen. And if you need a harsher white, then you, uh, you need to go to that. Okay, I'm actually going to switch back to red on this. Um, because what I need to do is a weave in bind off, and um, I, I'm going to need to do some sewing up. So, um, there's my beak, there's the front end of this, and um, I'm probably going to be covering up some of that beak with red. Okay, and um, doing some shaping there. So, I'm going to put that to the 
red so that I can <clears throat> do my weave and bind off and do my sewing. You want to do more of a tail um, when you do this so that you have room to um, sew up stuff. Okay. All right. What I like to do is go in and loosen up my stitches over the okay. Now you're going to cut you a long tail so that you have room to sew up. All right. Okay, cool. Alright, so what you want to do first thing is you want to try not to lose this stitch. <laughs> Toss it over and pull through. You can tie it off once you actually get this weave and bind off done. Then you're going to come back over to here and you're going to toss the loop over. And pull. Then you're going to come back over here, toss the loop over, pull through, and you're going to do this all the way across, back and forth. And this is your weave and bind off. Okay. And then make sure you're going to be ready to get sewing and stuffing. Okay. So pause the video and get your weave and bind off done. And then we will move on to doing our final touches up, sew it on, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So you can see what we have. There is your head and the body. Looks about right. If you want a longer neck, just make sure that when you, um, let's say you want to do a longer neck, you could do um, seven rows instead of five here and then do everything like normal. You're just now you're going to have some more connection time on the other side if you choose. Make sure that if you add on one side that you're going to end up adding it on the other. And naturally you would because you'll have more chains. Okay, I find it's easier to go ahead and stuff so you can see where you need to fill in. Heads don't usually need that much, so um, I need to know how much fill in I need to do. Now, keep in mind, yes. Their beak is technically smaller, but I'm going to be adding red over the top of it. So it's perfectly okay. Okay. I'm going to be adding red over the top of it. So like that's like your eye point right there. And you can cinch that in too. There's so much of this that is shaping. It's not as simple as a, well, let's just stuff it. Okay, now I can see what I have left to do. Now if you stuff it too much you'll miss um, areas. I don't like stretching my stuffing out too much because then it looks um, not as good I don't think. I cannot find my needles now. one. Okay, so you want to put that in there and you'll want to sew it up. You'll sew up the side and that kind of thing. Um, you may need to get a little of the blue and do some sewing up. I don't think so. I don't think that's going to be necessary. Okay, as you can see there is a space here. Gotta love the the only problem I found with this yarn and working with it, it wants to stick to itself. It's the only problem I found with it. Okay. Let's 
Set it up. And you'll notice I'm kind of going slightly past where it is, and it's because those stitches aren't stretched. And you can see that I've gotten it closed in. Now all you do is you go to the other side, and you just do the same thing. Um, you just sew it up. Now you may want to stuff a little so that you know what you're working with. Okay, you stuff a little bit more. As you're creating a chest area right now. Right. Now, um, when you do that, keep in mind the first stitch or so you're not going to um, do really tight. And the reason being is, is um, you've pulled it over from the other side. Okay. Now, I do have this orange. I'm just going to shove it in there. Don't need it at this very minute to do anything. So, at this point, it's in the way. I'm going to shove it out of the way. Okay. And then I go slightly behind it, that decrease section. And what that does is it gives you a solid stitch to sew from. And it works better this way. And it actually doesn't affect the um, stuffed animal that much to do it that way. But it keeps your sew up section looking a lot neater and doesn't have gaps. All tricks of how I do things. Okay. Now, the kind of the reason why I say cut a long tail, I said the problem I have found, it sticks to itself. Okay, now, you have this section here, and yes, I would probably go in with a blue and refine that. At this point, I want to go ahead and finish stuffing. Yes, you will be doing um, wire legs. Now, at first, it's probably going to seem like an excessive amount of stuffing, but you're fixing to sew it up, okay? And that's going to have a whole little different look to it, okay? Now, the reason why I did not cut it is because I'm going to come down through the side and gently, I'm not going to pull tight. This keeps you from having to cut and attach, cut and attach. I do not like cutting and attaching. That puts you at loose ends to do a whole lot of that stuff. So at this point, the reason why I tell you to do a chain cast on is because it makes it easier for you to find I'll start sewing it up. Okay. Now, if you know how to do a mattress stitch, go for it. All right. But you find the corresponding chain to the other side and you pick it up. Okay. So, and then go to the next chain. But yeah, if you know how to do the mattress stitch, go ahead and do the mattress stitch. It gives you a cleaner look. Or if you did the kitchener, if you feel comfortable doing the Kitchener, see, you know, I prefer the Kitchener, but now you're working through a hole that you're working through stitches. And if that gives you trouble, then don't bother with it. Okay. So I'm going to sew up my back in, and I like to tighten it as I go. Because if you try to do it where you're tightening it and you hadn't gone yet, say, I'm tightening it too much. Pull that okay. And you're starting to see the shaping going on here. Okay. So keep sewing and pulling through a little bit. Now do know you're gonna need to sew up that tail area. 
and that'll make it a little stiffer and yes you can put a wire in it and that will give it more shape where you can do whatever the heck you want with it yeah but sometimes sewing it up gives you all the stiffness you need okay that may need a little more stuffing There we go. We're starting to see that Come together now. Okay, the only thing I think might could have been done better is the it might be a little longer in the blue, but otherwise I'm quite happy with the way it looks. Alrighty. I'm showing you this just because um sometimes it's hard to see what the heck I'm up to. Alright, so you pull that little snug. Okay. And then, um, okay. And you pull that. Now you can show it up with the red. The colors are kind of just all over the place. <coughs> So you can try sewing it up with a red. The red does tend to follow into the tail. Um, but if you do that, gently pull it. Okay. But um, there you go. So you can kind of see what you got going on there. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to see what I have around here. I have a ton of stuff around here. But I'm going to probably cut a panel to do the look the little waddle area and uh, there's a lot more shaping to do but once you cut that panel you can do the eye cinching and um, as I said there's a lot more shaping that's involved um, but you can go ahead and you can sew up your tail if you'd like with the red Okay, and that way you're done. But I think sewing it should be fine. You shouldn't need to put a wire through it, but if you do, you can. Okay. So I'm just going to sew up my tail, and then it's the um, wings and I decided that I think you need to start with cream and work halfway up the bird so yeah I swear the internet it's awful right now okay so the bird has this cream color here and then like half the other part of the wing is orange so um yeah I got it Alright, so what you want to do is um, you want to cast on the cream, do half the half the wing in um, cream and then the other half in orange. Okay, so when you get to what? It's 15 pegs. You're doing a 15 peg wing um, when you get to say, I think, 9 Egg nine, switch to orange, yeah, and then finish up from there. So that should do you. So, um, go ahead and go to the wing video. And yes, I will put that in the um, info box below. And you'll go to the wing video. And what you'll do is you'll do you'll chain cast on in the cream color, the cream color you use for the beak, and you'll do 15 like it is, and then, um, when you do 15, then you switch over when you get to um, doing over to peg 9. Then it's when you switch over to the burnt orange and finish up the wing that way. Okay. And um, then when you finish up the wing that way, then you can go in and we can come back, come back to this video. 
<laughs> go make your wings and then come back to this video and then what we'll do is we will show how to do the final finishing touches and maybe I can find what I can use for my waddle. I need some sort of red um, to do that felt. But the I wanted red felt to just kind of go over or do two pieces and um, over this and then put the eyes in. Um, but you can see that it looks pretty good. So go ahead and pause the video, go over to the um, wing video, and make your wings. Remember it's going to flip to the opposite side in order to do the other side of the wing. Okay, and um, We'll be ready to sew on and then at that point hopefully I'll find the red that I want to go here and um, what I'll probably do is take my find the eye shape probably that one or that one and um, because their eyes are yellowish color I'll paint the yellow around the ring and add those um, but when you come back what we're gonna do is do those final finishing touches of texture on the bird so that you can see what that's supposed to look like, where the wings are going to be sewn, that kind of thing. Because the wings are going to be sewn more on the side than on and around the, the, on the back. And um, just because you have a lot more of that orange showing on the back, and the wings are kind of like right here. So I'm sorry about the glare. Um, so go ahead and do your wings, and then when we come back, I will show you how to attach the wings and finish the head and um, add the nice texturing of the feathering that are that's on a pheasant and uh, that should about cover everything so go ahead and pause the video get your wings done and we'll come back and finish up okay so um, I have done quite a bit I've gone ahead and I've sewn on my wings so that you know what I've done there and um, I also forgot to tell you to go ahead and do your legs and when I say double the length of the body I mean double the length of this body don't include the tail okay so when you double the length of the body you should get the fold in half and then fold and that kind of thing I didn't have any felt but I do have jersey knit and so I had some red jersey knit I've gone in and I cut um, these are inches squared, so what I did was I cut out uh, two pieces in an inch square and um, molded them in more of an oval, the top being a little narrower. So this is kind of an eyeball. There's no exact science to this because it can vary between your um, size of the bird. Okay, so I am ready to go ahead and um, glue that on there so I'm going to glue it around because I want my eye area available to stick a needle through fairly easily so I've added glue around the area and now I'm just going to kind of smash that in okay all right there's that side and then we can go this side so I've put glue around where the eyeball would be so that I can stick a needle through easily enough. Okay. Yeah. And I find doing this is a lot easier than trying to work it in. Okay. Alright, so I do have a needle. Yeah, it's done in pink, but it's not really gonna much matter. Um I'm going to send it up through the body. Try not to tie it off. Okay, then I'm going to send it up through where the eye area is. Okay. Okay. <sighs> did not help myself there, did I? Pull, pull, pull. Okay. So I'm going to send it up through the eye area. 
and try this again without pulling all the way through. Okay. Um, so, send it through the eye area. I'm not going to pull it all the way through this time. I will be honest, when it comes to sewing stuff, it's really hard to film. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's really gets hard to film. Okay, so then you stick it through the other side, and you pull it, and then you stick it back through, and you pull it, and you're going to do that a few times. And once you do it the first time, you can really start to pull it tight. Okay. So that you can start really getting in that area that you need. Alright, and we didn't stuff it much, so it means that we'll have nice space. Now we will need to get that beak area flatter. So when you go to send it back through, um Send it through in such a way that you can start to flatten out that beak. Because we're working with a thread, I'm not real worried about its color. Okay, so we need to get the beak sitting a little flatter. But it's funny with birds, they um, they have flat beak areas, but then they have flat heads this way. So it makes for fun, it makes for a lot of shaping, but I don't think it's that hard to go in and shape. It's worth the effort. Okay, so we've smashed our beak flat. And that should be starting to give its own look. Okay. Now, um, there's an area here that keeps staying open. I'm going to close it up real quick. So, I'm just going to close this up. Okay. At this point, I'm going to send that through. All right, and then we'll cut it. Now, as you can see, you should be starting to get what looks like a dozen. Now, what we need now is to add our color in our eyes and that kind of Now, I chose, if I can get hold of it, these eyes to add to it. But if I think they're too big, I may change it up. It looks like they might be too big. When I was messing with it last night, it didn't look too big. But those look too big now. So, always check before you hot glue it on in case it's too big. We'll go the next size down. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. Now, what you want to do... Is apply some glue here to your eye socket area that you've cinched, and essentially what that does is what we've seamed on and glued on. All right, and press that down, and we will go in and add our paint. That's going to take the longest part is adding the paint. Okay. And the paint process is what's really going to make it pop. So once you glue these eyes on, you're pretty much done with your um, this part. And you're ready to do painting. Okay. So, um, this is what it looks like without 
doing all the extra color thing that we're fixing to do. Still pretty much looks like a pheasant. So again, you can add a wire. I don't adding wires to things is actually more of a pain than you realize. Um, so I need to pull up my image real quick. And um, Okay. So what we have is some white through here. We have some speckling in the orange area, um, some brownish colors in the back of the wings. We may do need to do some black, um, brownish color in the back. And then we have some white specks on the back. Um, so at this point, I think I've got a general idea. Now it looks like I need a reddish brown, a black, and some white paint. When dealing with white paint, you want to actually get some white paint. I use whatever crafter's paint there is. You don't need anything truly special because you're just going to tap it on because it's just little white specks. Okay, so on your Paint. I think that's supposed to send a reddish brown and um, black. Yeah, you may do a little orange there. Okay. All right. So I've got a black, an orange, reddish orange, brown and a dark red. Okay, now I'm going to probably do the brush pen first and then when I add the paint, do a little paint to dry. Because <laughs> if you don't, there's also a white strip usually at the top of the pheasant and so um, keep that in mind. All right. Now, what we have is striping through here. So you can follow one of the half of the chain columns to give you that striping that you need. And then, um, if you want to. Go ahead and try to color the tips in where they're more dark. Can. Okay, I'm going to show you the one half. I'm not going to show you both halves. But if you follow that line right there, that'll give you the feathering that you want. Um, so there's that. And the reason why I pulled out the reddish orange is I think this could stand to be blended a little. Just a little. And there's a little bit of a reddish orange in there. Okay, now. Um, I do a lot of blending of colors, but it's because I'm an artist that I focus on it more. So, as you can see, that's really starting to blend out the color. Now, what you want to do next is there's a bunch of little spots. And to keep the spots more even, because it does look fairly even, is choose like a pattern with the chain work. 
in. You should get a fairly even. Look going on. Okay. And this is getting your specs without having to worry about it too much. Get your texture in. I like that. So. But you can use the um, patterning of the knitting to create the spots. See? So. And then there's spotting on the back and how you want to do that. Okay. I should usually shake it and just need what's in the lid. I don't remember if well, there it is. Okay, yeah. There's little specks of white on the back. And you can just find you just dab it on there. Okay, and there is a white bit nearly right here at the top. Tap it in, don't brush it in. If you brush it, you irritate the fibers of the yarn, so always tap it in. Alright, and if you feel like you need to smooth out the lines around the neckline area, like this side needs it more than anything else, you just go in and fill it in. Not a problem. See? Okay. So, that is how you do it. And if you think there's anything else that needs more shaping or anything like that, you do it. Okay. But always allow your paint to dry. Okay. I'll need to rinse that brush. Okay. Put that over here. But that is how you add the color. And as you can see, there's what it looks like with the color additions. And there is what it looks like without the color additions. You can do it either way. Okay, so play with it, work with it. It's um, fun, and you can treat it like, you know, a yarn sculpture is what I like to do. So that is how you loom knit a pheasant.